Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. I have a nephew getting married, and so I decided to turn this wedding ring holder or ring and jewelry holder. It's a essentially very uh, small bowl with a spindle in the middle of it. Except that I don't like to hollow it clear out in the concave. I like to leave a bump in the middle so that any jewelry items go more to the outside than to the inside. So I think it's a perfect wedding gift. However, I gave it away before I shot these pictures. So here's the replacement wedding gift, same form and matter. So let's make it. I found a great block of walnut, but it is a little too big. I found center and pressed it against my chuck, but instead of going after it with a gouge as I often do, I'm marking a circle before a quick trip to the bandsaw. I never try to cut exactly to a line. I'd rather leave it a little big than risk wandering inside the line and cutting it small. Now at the lathe again, I'm not cutting directly into the side. Instead, I'm cutting from the bottom. So I'm cutting into side grain instead of end grain. This makes shaping the bottom much easier. While I'm shaping the underside, I need to cut a tenon and another step above the tenon to guide my eye for the bottom curve. Now I'm reversing the wood and remounting it on the tenon so I have access to the interior. I'm first using my bowl gouge to hollow. I use a combination of cutting out to in and in to out. Quick wood removal is inside to outside. However, finish cuts are always push cuts from the outer rim to the inside. For this project, I want to leave a bump in the center. This is for jewelry and I'd rather not have it pile up in the center. To finish up, I'm using a round nose scraper before a thorough sanding. At this point, I'm applying lacquer. However, my shop is hot right now. When I tried to burnish the lacquer at high speed, I got clumps of paper towel in the finish. I'm having to sand it again and reapply lacquer. Finally, I'm drilling a hole to receive the center tenon. I finally broke down and purchased a set of coal jaws. My plywood jaws worked well for quite a while, but wore out. To keep my bowl off the surface of the jaws, I've cut a spider shape from a quarter inch OSB. The color you see is from my paper pattern. I'm using this now to trim the foot before sanding. I'm signing it now while still mounted so I can sand just a little more to remove scorching from the pyography before applying finish. Now I'm mounting another piece of walnut in a spindle orientation between centers. After roughing, my task is to cut a tenon on one end. For this, I like to use my sharpened wrenches. I like to size first one size too big and then go again at the right size. but I messed up and went one size too small. Fortunately, the spindle is long enough that I can just move up a little and try again. Now I can start shaping the spindle near the base that will be near my jaws. I don't like running a skew into my chuck jaws. I have enough shaping done, I can remount the spindle into my long nose jaws to finish the spindle work. I've switched to a smaller skew. Then sand and apply lacquer to the spindle. And buff both with Tripoli, white diamond, and carnauba wax before gluing the spindle to the base. I'm finished with a little time to spare before the wedding. I hope my nephew's wife can use this well. Essentially, this project is a small bowl combined with a simple spindle. Walnut is a great wood for this as it shows well and does not need to have a lot of beads and coves to look great. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough protection. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. Thank you.